Good morning, everyone. Uh, last time we have discussed on the first general principle, study the context. Okay, first general principle, study the context. And underneath of it, we have uh, seen uh, two levels of context. Then two good study practices may lead Christian to ignore the context. The number three, the believers should be aware of the context of the biblical promises. And number four, today we are going to see the six, the six guidelines to using context. Okay, uh, let's go to your note. Okay, general principle, we have uh, finished the context, uh, two levels of context, then two good study practices may lead Christian to ignore the context, then the believers uh, should be aware of the context of the biblical promises context of the biblical promises and today we'll study number four the six guidelines to using context <coughs> six guidelines to using context number one look at the verse you wish to interpret and think of any possible meaning okay uh, look at the verse you wish to interpret and think of any possible meaning now if you want to um, <coughs> if you want to uh, just interpret your text okay any portion of the text or any portion of the scripture uh, 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 verses that you want to interpret you can take it out uh, for uh, this class we will take uh, the example from john 3 16. let's say uh the, your your text is john 3 16 okay uh, to your bible you can open your bible with you john 3 16. You might be thinking that it is very easy and I don't need to uh, turn it out but uh, it is not easy okay please turn it out to your uh, uh, text John 3 16 for God so loved so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life okay so uh, think that this is your text that you want to interpret this you might be interpreting this uh, uh, long time back or you might be even preaching from this uh, text but I don't know whether you are doing it with the hermeneutics rule or not okay so you have to uh, come with the Bible uh, with the hermeneutic rules to interpret this scripture so here is the first Harmonetic rules or the principles how to interpret John 3 16. Okay, so we are going to interpret John 3 16 with the context. Okay, with the context. Okay, this is just a first principle. This is not all, uh, of all. Okay, this is how we should interpret in context. So look at the verse you wish to interpret and think of any possible meaning. So John 3 16 is your text okay now uh next b part read the verse in the context okay be sure to conclude to include enough context in this reading you need to get familiar with the section in which your verse is found see the context first second read it again and read it again more carefully this time look for links connection of words or thoughts not them don't try to interpret yet okay so uh, the guidelines uh, to using context is first you choose your text then next you have to read the verse again and again then you have to find out the context okay you have to find out the context so since i've already done this one uh, i'll just um, 
uh, go quick. Now, uh, John 3.16, to interpret John 3.16, John 3.16 itself is not the context, okay? John 3.16 is not the context of the text. Now, we have learned that uh, in the context, how do we search the context? Now, it says near and far uh, context are there. So, you have to read before and read after. So you have to read uh, John 3, 16, above and below, okay? So when you see the context, John 3, 16, for God's soul of the world, it is a continuation with, uh, of the uh, last sentences. Because we cannot start a sentence by for or therefore, as we have learned in uh, 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 Romans chapter 12. <coughs> So, for God, so love for, we cannot start by a sentence for. For is a conjunction. So, it is joining a word. So, you have to go to verse 15. Now, when you go to verse 15, that whosoever, okay? So, that is also a conjunction that cannot be, uh, um, you know, uh, that also cannot, uh, we cannot start a sentence by that. Then you go to verse 14, and as Moses lifted it up. Okay, so why John, the writer, is saying, and as Moses lifted up, and that is also a connection again. So you have to go to the next verse. So if you go reading, uh, reversed, okay, then finally you go to verse 1 of chapter 3. Now, when you go to verse 1 of chapter 3, you understand that Nicodemus coming to Jesus Christ, asking a question about born again, okay? So how can I be born again? How can I inherit the eternal life? That was the question of, jo uh, of, of Nicodemus. How can I inherit the eternal life? Now, Jesus Christ was explaining that you must be born again. And Nicodemus did not understand what do you mean by more born again, okay? Uh, when you read... Verse 9, you see, Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, So, uh, how can I go to my mother womb? I am old enough. So, how can I be born again? So, Nicodemus did not understand what is born again. So, Jesus Christ has to explain. And Jesus Christ said, If I tell you the heavenly things, if I tell you about the earthly things, you do not understand. How can I tell you about the heavenly things? So to make him understand, Jesus Christ knew very well that Nicodemus was a teacher and he was a scribe. That means Nicodemus knows the Old Testament very well. Jesus Christ knew that one. So Jesus Christ is taking the example or quoting from the book of law. And he was quoting about the incident of Moses and the brazen serpent. Now, in verse 14, he was saying, See, as Moses lifted up the brazen serpent, okay, so also the Son of Man will be lifted up. So, like Moses lifted up, me, the Son of Man, will be lifted up. And when it is lifted, of it is for your sin and whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life like those people who watch the brazen serpent over there they look at the brazen serpent and they were saved and that depend upon the beliefs so jesus christ was explaining the same thing to uh, nicodemus okay if uh, the Son of Man will be lifted at, and whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And that is the context here. But the context is not finished here. Now you have to go back to uh, go down there 17, 18, 19, until 21. Because the whole explanation is there. Okay? So Jesus Christ did not come here to condemn. Now, do everyone, uh, 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 you know, is condemned? No. He did not come here to condemn he did not come here to condemn the jewish laws and all these things but he came to give us eternal life so verse 1 to 21 is the context of john 3 16 okay now 
<clears throat> Number C. Study the passages more closely. You have to study the passages more closely. Now, how, what kind of study should we approach? Okay. Uh, this involves the following observation. So, what are the observation? How can we study the passages more closely? Uh, number one, the literary form of a passage. Is it a narrative? Is it a poetry? Is it a didactic? Or is it a prophecy? Now, we understand that John 3.16 is a didactic. Jesus Christ is teaching to Nicodemus. Okay? So, no doubt. Here, didactic means a teaching. Now, repeated words and phrase. Now, you have to see uh, from verse 1 to 21, what are the repeated words? Okay, so many repeated words, but uh, let's take an example, believes. Okay, the word believes. We have so many times, uh, like uh, six or seven times, it is repeated, believes. And phrases, phrases, believe in him in verse 15, believe in him, verse 16, believe in him, verse 18. So these beliefs in him become the core, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, meaning of the whole context. Believe in him, believe in him. Okay, then connective or uh, linking words, connective or linking words. What are the words that link to John 3.16? For God so loved the world, what is that Jesus Christ link of that John 3.16, for God so loved the world? He is linking with uh, uh, the brazen serpent of Moses. So verse 14 says, as Moses lifted up, as Moses lifted up, so also the Son of Man sh shall be lifted up. Okay, because that, that, that is a linking words. Okay. Time words, we don't have any time words, and you can, uh, what are the words that used in those times, and what are words that used in our times, there are some words like that, okay? We will see that one later, when we come to words. Now, uh, location or place words, location or place words, where do these conversation took place? Now, uh, the word of God says, in the midnight, when, when no one was around, Nicodemus came, okay? So it was in the mid, uh, that was the midnight conversation. Okay. And is there any contrast? Is there any comparison? Contrast, yes. Unbelief. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Those who ever believes in him shall be uh, uh, saved, but those who do not believe shall be perished. Okay. So those who do not believe, unbeliever and believer. Okay. Unbelieving and believing. And comparison, comparison. What are the comparison? The eternal life, contrast, perish. Okay, eternal life, eternal hell, or, or eternal uh, damnation. Okay, so uh, uh, we see that eternal life and perish is the comparison there. Now, is the unknown words? We don't have any unknown words here. And if there is unknown words in your text, okay, you study them. Uh, opening your dictionary like we have uh, learned the tools for interpreting the scripture okay so using that one you can do it now the core of each sentence the core that means the 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 heart of each sentence where sentences are long and involved it is well to know the subjects the man birth then the object of the word if the sentence are too long then you can find it out the subjects you can find it out the man verb and then you can find it out the object subject and object of the word okay so john 3 16 there is no full stop all john 3 16 the whole verse is only one sentence for god so loved the world that he gave so for god so loved the world god is a subject and object is the world we he love us so, so uh, love us okay love is an action okay so he loved so what he did he gave his son okay gave is a main verb that he gave his son so you have to understand the scripture portion using the grammatical rule that is why you are studying the grammar now, logical, uh, the figurative expression, we don't have any figurative expression there. Okay, Moses lifted up is a figurative. Uh, and so also the Son of Man uh, shall be lifted up. Now, logical consequences.
logical sequences okay two atoms are connected one being the cause of the other the effect the key word is for now logical sequences uh, two atoms are connected one being the cause of the other the effect the key word is for okay so uh, the, the John 3 16 begins with four okay four uh, that is the key word for God so loved the world for God so loved the world why did God send his son because he loved the world okay he loved the world so for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son now what is the cause here uh, what is the effect here and what is the cause uh, the cause is God so love okay God so love is the cause and the effect is he sent his son so that we have eternal life how do we have eternal life because God sent his son okay why God sent his son because he loved us so God so loved the world is the cause and sending his son is the effect okay uh, any strange or unusual or unexpected we don't have related uh, entries entities we don't have grammatical elements okay punctuation marks that you can learn it later on now um, not any words in your verse repeated in the in the context so the repeated words are beliefs okay there are many repeated words but the uh, uh, main theme of the uh, uh, the word that has been repeating is beliefs this may show us one object okay and indicate the connections not the synonyms if, if there is any synonyms if there is any uh, uh, similarities word or the similarity meaning you can find it out even that okay now you have done all these things now you have see uh, read the text john 3 16 then you have understand the understood the context that the context should be taken from verse 1 to 21 and uh, you have learned that there is a connection the contrast and uh, the object all these things you have learned now all these things that i have explained lastly what you have to do is try to write the section in your own words okay to see if you understand and can express the thought clearly now uh, you understand you read the scripture portion there are many people who knows the bible who understood the bible but they cannot express it clearly or they cannot bring out their thoughts clearly okay the problem is we don't write it down in our own words okay you try to explain only from the notes or only from the bible okay so please don't do that one when you if you want to become a good interpreter or if you want to become a good preacher what you have to do is you have to always take a note okay you read the bible the scripture person there john 3 16 and then you have understood that the context is from 1 to 21 and then you understood that uh, all the rules that has been applied for uh, uh to study uh, of using the context okay so you were studying them one by one like uh, you are uh, finding out the repeated words the phrase and then you have uh, uh, the, the connective words then you have the location contrast and comparison all these things that we have learned okay now you understood my class now it is not okay just to say that i understood your class and leave it out because when you explain this thing to someone can you explain the same thing that i explained to you you cannot because you do not write it down in your own words and you do not practice it so the best way is you write it down in your own words try to explain and think it okay is it clear enough that my thoughts is it am i clear enough for others to understand okay that is the uh, main thing in interpreting the scripture portion okay so you understand but if you don't know how to interpret or if you don't know how to explain to other clearly that means your learning is of no use okay so please try this one please try to do this one okay and number five uh there are uh, three points are necessary to see the context correctly so uh, there are three points to see the context clearly number one read carefully you have to read carefully observe every words and uh, uh you know you have to uh 
see that you don't miss any words that you do not understand so every words every sentences you have to understand okay read carefully observe accurately observe accurately observe accurately means what you have to observe correctly okay then think it clearly okay my thinking is it is it right that i am thinking is it uh, is it reliable to my text is there any contradiction is there any doubt that left in me when i interpret this scripture person for example you are going to explain john 3 16 as i explained to you now now see once you start doing this one in this scripture you will be a good interpreter and you will be a good preacher a biblical preacher okay so many people they don't want to you know invest your time doing all this thing they think it is a waste of time and when you are given a sermon and you are not laboring hard you just take the notes and then you go to google and then you search for a topic and then you go you go copy some other uh, you know notes and some other press sermon and then you preach as if that is your sermon and that is why your and me or mine uh, okay our uh, i mean our uh, uh, sermons are not effective okay if you want your sermon to be effective do the same thing and remember this is only principle number one of the general principles there are a lot of things to come upon it and if you are not able to do even with this first step okay you may not become a good preacher or i may not become a good preacher so let us fix to this harmony to Israel. and as i said okay you and i are to become a good preacher okay and god called you to be a preacher to be a good interpreter dividing the word of god okay rightly dividing the word of god okay you have to rightly interpret the word of god okay so in order to do that one if you uh, uh, uh thoroughly uh studied the hermeneutics it will be uh, uh you know it will be effective for all of us okay and as i said this course is not only for the second year this is for your lifelong okay so next class we will see number b that is words okay uh number one principle is context number two is words so we are going to study what uh, how do we study the words okay so as of now we'll wind up our class from here god bless you